911 emergency, what are you reporting? Um, my daughter fell off a cliff in Palos Verdes. A tiny four-year-old girl out on a special daddy-daughter date takes a terrifying tumble. How bad is she? Is she? I don't know, I haven't gone down and found her. The father says she accidentally slipped over the edge. I just remember wailing, heaving, no words were coming out. But when investigators get out to the scene, their stomachs drop. I don't know. This is not exactly where I would bring a four-year-old. It's no seaside playground. It's a perilous cliff with a terrifying drop 120 feet down. There were no injuries consistent with slipping or sliding. Was the little girl's fall a freak accident, or is it possible this father did the unthinkable? She had to be propelled. One detective fights every day to find the answer. He will not rest until he discovers what really happened to this beautiful little girl up on that cliff. I'm just thinking it doesn't make sense. This is the day that the Lord had me. This is the Lauren Key loves singing, playing with dolls, and dancing. She was a typical four-year-old girly girl. I'd always liked the name Lauren, so when she was born, I looked into her baby blue eyes and just, just knew the name was perfect for her. Describe her and her personality. It was just contagious. She was very happy. But Sarah Kimar, Lauren's mother, says there was something that tortured her smiling daughter every day. Lauren was the highly coveted centerpiece in a nasty tug of war between her mother and father. Who's her father? Cameron Brown. Cameron Brown, a rugged outdoorsman who liked to ski, surf, and run marathons. He was often seen tooling around ritzy Newport Beach, California in a souped up army truck similar to this one. So how'd you meet Cameron? We met in Newport Beach at a jazz bar. And you started a relationship from there? Yes. Brown was an airport baggage handler. His job, hurling 50 pound pieces of luggage on and off airplanes. And before long, he'd also swept the British Rose off her feet whisking Sarah away on vacations. But just a few months later, their whirlwind romance comes to a crashing stop. When Sarah finds out, she's pregnant. Did he have any interest in the baby? He chose not to be part of the pregnancy. Did he want you to keep the baby? He'd expressed that he did not. Brown finally appears to embrace his impending fatherhood, but then something inside him snaps. And then what happened? He started pressuring her to have an abortion. Uh, when she refused to do that, he threatened to have her deported. Deputy District Attorney Craig Hum says Brown even tries to have Sarah fired from her job when she refuses to end the pregnancy. When that didn't work, he just cut off all contact with her and had absolutely no contact with her at all. By the time little Lauren is born, Brown is completely out of the picture. For the first few years of her life, um, he wasn't part of her life, but that was his choice. Did he ever ask to meet her? No, he did not. It's not like he lived that far away from his daughter that he couldn't have seen her if he wanted to. Sarah wanted there to be some kind of a relationship, so there was nothing preventing him uh, from having a relationship with Lauren. Sarah's raising Lauren on her own, but eventually the financial toll overwhelms the single mom. Sarah was just having difficulty making ends meet, and so what she did was she filed a petition for child support, and uh, he was ordered to pay child support. One of Brown's co-workers at the airport says the absentee dad constantly complained about the hefty payments. He was paying a thousand dollars a month in child support, uh, which was about 40 to 50 percent of his income. And that's when Brown reportedly comes up with a devious plan. He told one of his friends, uh, I heard that in order to get your child support reduced, you have to request visitation, and so that's what I'm going to do. His initial request was for 33 percent custody and joint legal custody, and he'd never even met Lauren. Wow. 
Sarah says she was nervous, but Lauren, now three years old, couldn't wait to finally spend time with her dad. I think initially Lauren was excited to meet her father. The first few visits went okay. They were supervised by Sarah, but uh, pretty quickly friction started to develop and there were issues. Sarah tells me the happy-go-lucky little girl suddenly becomes troubled and withdrawn. I would detect anxiety and tantrums that increased as the visits went along. She became very fearful and scared of things that she hadn't been before. Did Lauren ever verbalize to you, no, I don't want to see daddy, I don't like daddy? She had said that she did not want to go. She would hide under the bed but the court order said that she had to go and it broke my heart to have to let her go. A few weeks before Thanksgiving, Brown arranges an afternoon visit with Lauren. Sarah says she's still haunted by what happened early that morning. I had dropped her off at her preschool and as I hugged her goodbye, I told her that her father was collecting her. She immediately started to cry and hold on to me. It was hard to separate. The teacher had to come out and pry her from me. I assured her everything would be fine. She was gonna have a great afternoon. The last words I said to her was, I love you. And the last words she said back to me also were the same. Throughout the morning, Sarah can't stop thinking about Lauren. She called the school a couple of times to see how Lauren was doing. Uh, and the teachers uh, told her that she was still upset, but she was doing okay. In fact, the teacher tells her Lauren was too upset to eat her favorite lunch, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Sarah was so uh, distraught about the impact that this visit was having on Lauren that she made the decision that uh, even with the court order ordering visitation, uh, she was just not gonna let it happen that day. So Sarah heads out to pick up Lauren at school, but it's too late. Brown's already there. The teachers reported that she didn't want to go with her father. She was crying, uh, and he had to physically pick her up and carry her out of uh, the preschool. Brown drives Lauren to Palos Verdes, the seaside town just south of Los Angeles where he lived. He's planned a hiking trip with the four-year-old up to a remote cliff in a secluded area called Inspiration Point. Is this the kind of place that you would take a child? No parent, nobody would take a four-year-old child out there. They make the nearly one-mile trek to the cliff and end up sitting on this rocky ledge overlooking the ocean. While Lauren tosses rocks into the raging Pacific Ocean below, Brown says he looks away for a split second, and when he turns back, his little girl is gone. He just saw her feet as she went over the cliff head first. Up next, cops believe it's a tragic accident until a detective hears the father's 911 call. My daughter fell off a cliff. In Palos Verdes, I know the new bathers go. You guys don't want to get dressed. <laughs> Sorry. Where's the panic of a heartbroken dad? It was like he was ordering a pizza. Rather than going to her body or to try and rescue her, he spent about four and a half minutes talking to the 911 operator. 